Good afternoon, colleagues. We are starting a traditional series of press conferences in view of the upcoming General Shareholders Meeting of PGC Gazprom. In the coming six weeks, we are going to have six press conferences to discuss the major outcome of Gazprom's operations in the course of 2018, its future plans looking forward, and current efforts. As was the case last year, we hold these press conferences in St. Petersburg with a video link to a press center in Moscow. We have um, recordings available at gazpromvideo.com.au um, and um, also we have a recording which you can play back over the phone. Um, um, both Russian and English languages are available and the full list of press conferences is available at the website. We're going to discuss today the mineral and reserve base gas production and development of the gas transmission system. Uh, we have Mr. Vitaly Markelov, Deputy Chairman of the Management Committee, here with us, and also Mr. Oleg Aksutin, Deputy Chairman of the Management Committee and uh, Head of a Department. And then we have two members of the Management Committee, Heads of Departments, Mr. Sergei Menshikov and Vyacheslav Mikhalenko, as well as Deputy Head of Department, Mr. Vasily Petlichenko. And we're ready to proceed with your questions, starting with uh, journalists in St. Petersburg. Tas, please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Olga Dzaeva, and here's my question. With gas production growing, when can we expect or should we expect an increase of the overall 2019 production guidance. Well, our production plan does envisage production of 495.1 uh, billion cubic meters of gas in the course of 2019. That's the current guidance. But as you know, we um, proceed based on the market demand. and. Um, as we saw in the course of 2018, our plan was um, um, had one number, and uh, uh, the actual um, number produced was 26 billion cubic meters more. So considering 2019 now, as of today, we uh, um, have produced more, 8 billion cubic meters of gas more than um, envisaged by the plan as at the current date. The total 2019 production is yet unknown. It depends on the total exports volumes and the market demand. But obviously, we'll get some adjustments, of course. Generally speaking, Gazprom targets its operations in such a way um, so as to have quarterly, uh, rather one one-off, uh, adjustments, so we do review the production plan regularly. Thank you. And next question, please, from Interpax. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Mr. Markelov, please comment on the uh, statistics of fires at uh, trunk pipelines in Russia. Is that in any way related to the investment to allocate to upgrade and maintain the gas transmission system. So is there any correlation of the number of fire incidents um, with the investment um, that you target to upgrade the gas transmission system? Thank you for your question. I would like to explain here that the reliability of Gazprom's gas transmission system is fully in line with global practices elsewhere, as well as uh, the requirements. More than that, our numbers in this regard are much better than other players in the field can offer. In the course of 2018, we did have eight um, fire incidents, that was true. Uh, those uh, happened on trunk pipelines but if you consider the per unit statistics, I can tell you that the overall numbers are very good. So the reliability of gas supply is very high. I'm going to give you some numbers in this connection. Now, the per unit metrics, the average uh, number of incidents would be 0 0.035 
worldwide incidents per thousand cubic per, per thousand kilometers of pipeline length. That's the lowest n- number across our history. And uh, starting from November 2014, we have seen a downward trend on the number of fire incidents and trunk pipelines. In 2019, we have uh, had four fire incidents, of which three happened in trunk pipelines. One other incident occurred at a gas condensate pipeline. All of these incidents are related to a particular defect uh, of stress corrosion. I'm talking about the three cases of fires and trunk pipelines. We undertake every effort required to ensure reliability of gas supply, and no off-taker was affected by the incidents in question. <coughs> PJC Gazprom uh, is undertaking an effort to uh, do proper maintenance and overhaul uh, of its gas transmission system to ensure a high level of reliability. Deferring to your question specifically, we allocated about 18 billion rubles into maintenance and overhaul in the course of 2018. And um, in the course of 2019, there will be a further upside in that number. I would like to reiterate this idea. We have not seen any decrease in the volume of overhaul and maintenance efforts. More than that, in 2019, we have seen an increase in overhaul and maintenance uh, works of uh, trunk pipelines. So our reliability is at a very high level. Thank you. Next question, please. Tatiana Kudryshova, Ria Novosti. And my question is about Tom Field and your joint project with Roskaza de Becha. At a recent call, you mentioned that you're still working on the design concept of the field. And uh, when could that be completed? What's the priority uh, scenario for to, ma- to monetize gas from that field? Uh, so uh, this question is handled by Mr. Sergei Menshikov. Um, um, Head of Department. We have a memorandum of understanding signed on the 5th of May 2017 with Roskazo de As part of that memorandum, we are undertaking an effort to understand the uh, prospectiveness of uh, this group of fields uh, north Tombe, West Tombe, and uh, the Sisko fields. Following that work, we are going to define the configuration of this particular project. As of today, we have already outlined the basic layout, which um, has several options to monetize the hydrocarbons produced. We are going to look further into the feasibility of this potential project so that the parties involved could make their informed investment decision. Thank you. And um, when that's happening, we're still working on the particular layout and uh, still looking into the feasibility of this project. Mr. Xotin is adding um, and following up on that. So the major monetization option would be um, to uh, feed gas into the gas transmission system while the gas condensate uh, fraction could be um, transported uh, using other means of transport, such as railroad and truck. And uh, one further follow-up question on the Tombe field. I understand that you're still finalizing the concept, but do you still have, do you already have the basic uh, features such as the production shelf with the Bovenenko field? That was known pretty much in advance. We're uh, still working uh, on the exploration, and as we have been discussing the concept, three different options were considered. Finally, uh, we are, have opted for the Cineman uh, deposit, and as part of that, exploration is already focused. By the 20, year of 2022, that is going to be fully completed, and based on the exploration effort, we'll be able to determine the final parameters for the project. There is still a range from, uh, let's say, 52 to 80 billion cubic meters produced in the course of a single year. Um, every year. 
And uh, another follow-up question on the Yamal Peninsula. Bovenenko field has been launched already. Harasovetsky is uh, under development. Which one would follow? And the next field uh, for development is Kruzensternskoye. That is highly ready for further development, and uh, that is uh, our pipeline looking forward. As to the timeline, we are um, still considering, frankly, and we cannot produce any specific date. And actually, uh, we have three different options uh, following our long-term strategic development plan covering the years of 2022 through 2028. Next question, please. Um, just a quick follow-up, if I may. Uh, did you mention the number of uh, 90 billion? No. Um, what was the number in the answer to the previous question? Answer, it, uh, it's 52 to 80. 52 to 80. Um, so that would be phase one with further upside looking forward. But again, this is very preliminary, and we're going to have um, uh, more numbers, more precise numbers, once exploration has been fully done. We are working on the Cinnamon deposit. For now, the underlying deposit is going to follow soon, so that's very preliminary. Question, okay, um, how much money are you going to invest into exploration efforts in Russia and abroad for the year of 2019, with a breakdown, if I may? And so, well, uh, our plan is to invest about 76 point two. Uh, billion rubles, of which 72.6 will be dedicated to exploration in Russia, and 1.5 billion rubles will be streamed into exploration elsewhere um, um, for underground uh, storages. And uh, 2.6 billion uh, would be targeted to uh, facilities outside the Russian Federation. Any fo ne fo uh, further question? Interfax. Um, question on the Baltic LNG project. Are you going to have any foreign partner involved? Um, like Shell, for example, are going to sign a contract with them? Or no foreign partner at all? And also, what would be the per unit um, cash cost um, of liquefaction? Can you compare that with Yamal LNG and facilities in Qatar? Thank you. Once Shell offered joining the project. That was a different project. Uh, it was only about liquefaction. Currently, Gazprom has decided to implement a comprehensive project to uh, uh, not only to liquefy, but also to process um, gas. That's an integrated uh, project, and um, it has uh, certain benefits on top of what standard liquefaction projects can offer. Uh, for example, we're going to produce 3.6 million tons of ethane, 2 million tons of um, uh, liquefied hydrocarbon gases, and so on. So um, based on that, um, cash cost per unit for the liquefied gas per se is going to be a uh, quite good because LNG per se is going to be only part of the total production. Referring to um, your question about foreign partners, as of today we have only signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, Ros Gazodobicha to create Roshim Alliance JV. So um, we're working with Ros Gazodobicha and uh, we do have uh, technological partners as of today. We are considering um, the use of Linda license technology. You may join the project. So the project today is ready for its implementation phase. We are doing the design now. Uh, thank you. Next question from Vedemus team. Now, a quick follow-up, if I may. Since uh, we have touched on the Baltic LNG as a comprehensive gas processing project, one, aren't you concerned that once all the uh, uh, good fractions um, have been um, 
extracted from the produced gas, the calorific value of the gas per se is going to be rather low, relatively low. And uh, secondly, uh, given that you produce all different products uh, as part of gas processing, um, so low calorific value gas, where could that be in demand? Uh, is it available in the Netherlands, let's say? Question, what, why do you think the calorific value is going to be low? And so because it's going to be 97% methane if you extract all the other fractions. And so, well, that project uh, is comprehensive gas processing indeed. And the calorific value um, of the gas uh, in its liquefied state um, is ensured once we follow all the technological solutions envisaged by the project so we wouldn't um, uh, admit that um, your statement that the calorific value is going to be low is correct. Okay, next question is about the Far East. Do you still maintain your plans to start production at South Kirinsky Field in the course of 2023? And who's uh, going to uh, be the license uh, holder of the uh, technology and the equipment? Uh, is that going to be a local um, supplier of the technology or uh, a foreign partner? Actually, Arthur, we suggest that we handle that question as part of the press conference dedicated to the Far East. Question, do we uh, consider Covicta as a Far East project as well? And so, yes, Covicta belongs to the Far East and gas program team. Next question from Taz. When are you going to determine the final starting date for Turk Stream commissioning and also whether you expect Nord Stream 2 to be commissioned on time given there is still no permit from Denmark? Turk Stream um, is going to have its first gas pipe the 31st of December. The offshore part is fully ready. The onshore part was 100% ready on the Russian side, and it's 73% 73.5% ready on the Turkish side. In November 2019, we would expect 100% readiness across the board with further commissioning of its spending, but still. Uh, um, we'll manage that on time. And then our colleagues in Europe are building a further distribution network. So we are expecting uh, it to be commissioned and the first uh, deliveries uh, to start in the uh, final weeks of December. And on Nord Stream 2, we're going to handle that question uh, in a dedicated press conference. And on the Russian side of um, uh, Nord Stream 2, from Grazovet Slavyansk, we only have about 40 kilometers remaining for Grazovet Slavyansk pipeline. That's the part of Nord Stream within the Russian Federation. So the Russian part is nearly ready. And uh, the um, part outside Russia is going to be discussed in a dedicated press conference. So now uh, let's ask our colleagues in Moscow who are available by video link. Any questions there? Uh, Anastasia Gorova. Who is celebrating her birthday today, by the way. Congratulations, Anastasia. Thank you so much. Um, well, I have a couple of questions to clarify. Following up on um, those answers I have already heard, and then a couple of further questions from my side. Um, my first question is the range of 52 to 80 billion cubic meters to be produced at Tom Bay Field. Is that only the Cineman deposit, or does that include the underlying deposits as well? So the range of 52 to 80, is that Cineman deposit only? Answer no. That's uh, Cinnamon plus underlying. We're talking about fat gas and uh, ethane heavy gas, so we're going to uh, be building up up to 50, up, up to 80 billion. Question: So uh, the phase one is cinnamon, correct? And so yes, that's correct for phase one, and then we'll proceed with. Uh, uh, we'll start with 52, and then ramp up to 80. Understood. And another follow-up on the Baltic LNG project. Do I get it right that you're considering a Linde uh, licensed technology for liquefaction? But is that still the final decision, or is that still unclear? And so, no. Uh, Linde is a licensed 
uh, holder of the technology, but uh, will have the final decision made as part of the design effort. Question, when are you going to uh, choose the technology finally? Uh, and so we are starting the design phase now. Okay. Uh, after these follow-up questions, let me proceed with my own ones. In a recent interview, Mr. Merkelov uh, explained to G Gazprom's corporate journal that Gazprom is capable of increasing its gas production 20% um, on top of each design capacity for each individual field. So what would be the overall number? Should every field run by Gazprom get up to speed, full design capacity, and go on top? Like, what could be the maximum capacity per year? Do you have some numbers here? Gazprom's production capabilities exceed our current um, our current um, uh, production number by about 20%. That's what I meant. Question, so does this mean uh, 495 billion cubic meters plus 20% on top? And so yes, exactly. We have about 80 to 100 BCM of extra production capacity. Understood, so, but that would mean going up to design capacity or exceeding that. You know, production varies across the year. In winter, that would be maximum, uh, while in summer, it's not. Uh, that's quite obvious. So uh, if we were to be producing at a maximum capacity um, throughout the year, we would have had the number I actually mentioned. OK, and, and then, by the way, and by the way, plus 20% on top, actually. Uh, understood. And what's the target daily production for the Hill Company um, for the uh, year average and also Bovanenkova maximum daily flow and also uh, your underground storages, the maximum daily flow from underground storages. So three questions, in fact, and then I'll have more. On the Bovenenkova field, the maximum daily production in 2019 is going to stand at 87.4 billion cubic meters of gas. In the following um, years, um, as you may have read in the media, uh, further development uh, of certain wells may take it up to 115 billion cubic meters per day. Uh, question, how about daily flows? Uh, currently, that's 317 million per day. Question, is that the target for the full year? Answer, as you hear from Mr. Merkelov, it depends on the actual demand and then the capabilities of our transmission system. It could be currently a uh, lower, but we can ramp up to 300, 317 million per day. Question, uh, do I get it right that you can get to 360 million per day once you get to 115 billion cubic meters per year? Uh, question, where do you have this number of 360 from? I got that from Mr. Chiripano, uh, who preceded you in your current position. So he mentioned that number. Okay, uh, with the 20 percent um, excess that we have just discussed. But the, uh, the actual design capacity of Bovenenko field is 350 million per day maximum. Okay, got here, 350 rather than 360. And again, um, I would like to reiterate this idea. It depends on the uh, operation of our transmission system. Question, so would you ramp up to 350 million per day uh, if you get to 115 per year, BCM? And so, uh, no, 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 if you divide 115 billion cubic meters by 365 days, you get a low number. We're talking about 350 as a maximum peak daily flow, depending on the actual drilling and output. Um, but we could actually do more, but that would exceed the um, regime, the technological mode designed for each particular well. Okay, and uh, one final question. What would be the maximum daily production 
uh, in the course of this year across the whole company. Um, let me handle um, your question about the underground storages first, and then we'll revert to this maximum daily production question. So, with underground storages, the maximum output um, was 812.3 uh, million per day. That was in the course of 2018, record high. And in 2019 to uh, 2020 winter, uh, that would be 743.3 uh, million uh, per day. Okay, thank you. So if you don't have the number for the whole company per year, um, so I have further questions on how to survey. Okay, Anastasia, uh, uh, please ask one question on the how to survey field, and then we'll hand it over to other colleagues who have other questions. So good question then. Um, for how to survey, when are you going to hit the plateau of 32 billion cubic uh, meters per year when you're going to hit the maximum design capacity? The Harris survey field, okay, the uh, plateau of 32 BCM is going to be hit in the third or fourth year of uh, this field's development. Speaking of which, starting in uh, the 2019, we have commenced um, preparatory work and we have a state expert review as well as an environmental review for offshore wells. Uh, drilling is uh, going to start in 2020 for the onshore part. And again, the plateau of 32 billion cubic meters per day is going to be hit in the third or fourth year um, um, as we feed gas into the transmission system of Bovenenkova Uhta pipeline. Okay, thank you. Any further question? Dmitry Konstantinov, uh, Gas Industry Magazine. Question to Mr. Vitaly Markelov. Mr. Markelov, what are the prospects of natural gas as fuel uh, for um, uh, the power equipment or powered equipment at uh, the gas production pads themselves? We have seen some good examples at Kovicta fields. So how about driving the rigs with gas uh, going to um, roll out that experience from Kavikta. You have touched um, upon a very important subject. Whether um, natural gas could be used as a motor fuel. Gazprom is actively involved in um, um, rolling out that project because if you want to convince others, you need to do that yourself first. We are actively converting our motors and vehicles to um, gas as motor fuel. 50% of our fleet currently operates using um, natural gas as motor fuel. And we have um, taken that uh, project further. Um, you have rightly put it, Kavikta um, field has actually um, used um, um, liquefied gas to produce electric power for the drilling rigs. Um, in regions like Victor and other uh, areas with difficult access, that could be a feasible option. But again, um, these solutions will be chosen individually as we do each individual feasibility study and as we compare delivery of traditional fuel. That is definitely feasible for Kavikta. Thank you. Then I have a question to Mr. Sergei Menshikov. Mr. Menshikov, uh, Hara Survey Field uh, is the first project for Gazprom at the uh, Yamal Peninsula offshore. Why are you going to do offshore drilling from the onshore part? What would be the average length of those wells? What kind of equipment and technologies are you going to use? And what's the current status of the project? As I have already explained, this um, project uh, design has already received positive state expert review 
on the one hand, and uh, also the environmental review, and uh, also for the connection to the uh, gas transmission pipeline. The uh, offshore wells are going to be drilled by Bentec rigs uh, with horizontal um, part of the well um, going up to 1,000 um, meters into the onshore, offshore. And uh, we're going to use uh, um, the technology not much affecting the implementation of the uh, underground part. And we're going to use uh, uh, Russian um, technologies and equipment which we have tested at Bovinenko field already. Uh, let me reiterate this idea. This project is currently at a preparatory phase with first equipment summed for the um, uh, uh, hydro, uh, hydro reservoirs for the rigs. Okay, thank you. Uh, and now I have a question to Mr. Vyacheslav Mikhailenko. Mr. Mikhailenko, what are the um, uh, current um, development prospects for, for um, the um, uh, gas industry in uh, uh, Russia and how uh, those new um, innovative technologies that we could use are going to affect the pipelines themselves and how are they going to contribute to the environmental balance in the dedicated regions where those pipelines are. Thank you for a very interesting set of questions. And uh, the key trend here, as you hear from Mr. Merkelov, is improved reliability of the gas transmission system. It's not only about improved reliability, but also improved energy efficiency, as we now see it. You may have noticed that a Gazprom has uh, focused on high pressure pipelines as of recent. This helps us improve energy efficiency. Um, and per unit metrics of gas transmission. On top of that, Gazprom runs a comprehensive energy efficiency program which um, provides for decommissioning of obsolete, not up to date uh, sections of the system that we don't use for actual gas transmission. In the course of 2019, we are going to decommission 10 workshops um, uh, which are less energy efficient, thus improving the overall efficiency of the system. Considering new technologies, that effort provides for the uh, use of uh, all sorts of um, uh, uh, energy efficiency technologies. For example, the reduced consumption of uh, fuel gas per uh, unit of uh, uh, gas transmission as we uh, use, for example, um, coated pipes, uh, thus uh, reducing friction and improving the hydraulics in transmission. We also consider or count here further questions related uh, to low emission combustion chambers. Gazprom is also involved in considering uh, hydrogen mixes uh, with ethane. So all these technologies and approaches do contribute to the overall uh, energy efficiency of gas transmission. Thank you. Any further question? And good afternoon. If I may, Vitaly Sokolov, Energy Intelligence. I have a one quick follow-up question on the Linde technology that you have um, already mentioned, and two more questions from my side. You have mentioned that Linde is one potential technological partner you are considering for Ustluga. Any other potential technological partners that you can mention? Shell? Shell, OK. Shell and Linde, they get it right, so you're considering two technologies, OK? Thank you. And one uh, further question on the integrated project. Um, since uh, that is a comprehensive gas processing project uh, for gas coming from Nadim Portaz, actually that gas is going to occupy part of the capacities in the northwest of Russia, uh, transmission, and also probably Nord Stream 2. Are you going to reconsider development plan for certain fields in the Yamal Peninsula, such as postponing commissioning of certain fields in the Yamal or certain reservoirs, at least? OK, uh, the impact of the uh, uh, gas uh, 
processing project. Actually, uh, under the calorific value of the gas involved, actually, the development plan for Yamal does factor that in already. So the plans we announce currently, the dates we explain to you, already factor in the uh, developments you have just explained. And one further question, if I may. You have mentioned that the main option to monetize gas from the Tombe field would be to feed gas into the gas transmission system of Gazprom. Are you considering at all um, any uh, LNG project in Yamal based on gas coming from the Tombe field or any other field, let's say offshore Kara or the uh, Gulf of Ob? As of today, we are not considering that LNG uh, for Tombe fields. We are not considering LNG for the Tombe fields. Question, any further prospects for LNG uh, in Yamal, also for the offshore fields? Thank you. Well, the long-term strategic development program of Gazprom uh, does not. Uh, consider those projects for now. Okay, thank you. Any further question? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you, please. Good afternoon again. I would like to uh, clarify, just in case, whether you have the number for the uh, maximum uh, daily production volume for Gazprom. If yes, then please name that. If no, then I have another question for you. You have mentioned that uh, Kamenomiska um, field is going to be launched in the year of 2025 and development is set to start in 2020. In this regard, I have a question. When are you targeting Plato for that uh, field that is going to be about 15 or 16 BCM per year, if I'm not mistaken? Do you uh, expect to have a pipeline connected to the field? Uh, given the Simakovsky field, which uh, you're working on jointly with Ros Gaza Debicha. And I have another question on investments, the CAPEX program. Okay, if, if I may. Okay, on the daily flow for 2019. So, as of the 1st of uh, January next year, we're going to have maximum daily flow one point. Uh, for uh, uh, seven, uh, three billion per day. Uh, 1.497? Yeah, 1.473, uh, 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 yeah, 1.4973. And on the Camino Mesco field, yes, 2025 to be commissioned and the 15.1 BCM plateau is to be reached within three years from the launch. On the Simakovsky and Parasnoy fields, we do um, take those into consideration uh, because, well, these are going to affect one another as, a, let's say, a gas collection system, for example. They are located uh, within close vicinity to one another and they must be in sync, of course. Thank you. And one more question from Anastasia, and we'll get back to a St. Petersburg uh, conference room. So, okay, uh, CAPEX, I have taken an effort to do the calculations to see that in 2020 and 2021, you are going to launch about nine new fields, which is a great lot, frankly speaking. At the same time, you're going to be expanding the pair of Siberia projects and uh, also Sahalin Khabarovsk Vladivostok pipeline and run lots of other projects. Now, uh, during your uh, Capital Markets Day back in February, the CAPEX plan for 2020 to onwards, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, 1.2 trillion rubles of CAPEX per year. So this seems to be relatively low, like 1 trillion in 2020 and uh, 1.2 trillion in 2021. So um, at the face of it, the CAPEX size is much less than the scope of projects involved. So I'm wondering whether you're targeting any upside in the CAPEX program. Thank you. Well. I didn't quite hear the 
final um, sentence from you because you're laughing. Could you repeat that, please? A uh, question whether you can, uh, whether they are targeting any upside in the CAPEX plan. If so, um, and if not, if not, maybe some projects could be put on hold. Indeed. You have mentioned a number of projects that are in the pipeline as of today, and these are to be commissioned in the course of 2019. I can tell you that 2019 is not a typical year as compared to adjacent years, um, because we are commissioning, indeed, a very significant volumes of um, new pipelines. Now, in 20 years of Gazprom's history, this is probably the first time that we uh, commissioned more than 7.5 thousand kilometers of trunk pipelines in a single year. I'm um, talking of Turk Stream, Nord Stream 2, and Pair of Siberia combined. So the investment size um, uh, is record high in 2019, um, record high in the course of the 20 years of our history. Now, uh, further facilities to be launched in 2020 and uh, further years, um, those are related to uh, the production side rather than the transportation side. Uh, those require much uh, less capex than uh, trunk pipelines. We are going to expand certain trunk pipelines, of course, such as the pair of Siberia, because um, we are going to have 2,159 uh, kilometers of trunk pipeline with the Zeska and Temanska um, compressor stations in, um, uh, in the course of this year, and we're going to expand that trunk pipeline looking forward. The same is true for Nord Stream 2. Um, it is going to be expanded, and um, I'm going to uh, take a broader view here with the Northwest Corridor included. So the numbers you have mentioned, Anastasia, uh, were produced at the Capital Markets Day, and they are very much true to life. Now. Uh, we hear from Mr. Merkelov that we are going to commission a lot of facilities in 2019 alone. And uh, given what you have said, the numbers are quite comparable with the CAPEX plan uh, that has been in place as of recent and in the course of 2019. So the numbers are there based on understanding that we need to ensure certain volumes of production and certain volumes of transmission. So the numbers you have produced, the numbers you have mentioned are pretty much true to life. Thank you. And before we uh, get back to uh, the journalists in St. Petersburg, I'd like to congratulate Anastasia, wish her to stay in good health, and all the best to her, given her birthday today. So everyone joins in to congratulate Anastasia. Uh, back to St. Petersburg. Any further questions here from Ria Novosti? Please go ahead. I would like to clarify um, um, the um, license for West Kamchatka block. So you suspended that, you wanted to keep it, uh, whether you have managed to do it. That's my question. Um, as of today, we um, keep working on the West Kamchatka a lot, and we're going to um, keep the license uh, so that we could keep going with the works. Uh, okay, we also get questions online from those journalists who um, uh, watching us uh, online, for example, Maria uh, Grabar from Reuters is asking the following. Um, could you please um, uh, explain the resource base for the potential JV with the gross gas debate for the faction? You mentioned in the press release that Achimov and Leski deposits from the Demportas. Uh, could that be Smakovska, uh, Parosov, and says Parosovska fields? Or are you mostly talking about the Uringoy field? If so, uh, what are you going to do with uh, Smakovska, Parosovo, and North Parosovo fields and gas from those three? The resource base for the gas processing uh, and liquefaction in Ustluga is um, uh, going to come from the Dimportas, uh, so 45 billion cubic meters of gas per year is uh, going to come from the Dimportas to Ustluga. And that gas has a high rethane fraction. 
So as of today, the project um, uh, does factor in the existing, currently existing production uh, capacities. Okay, thank you. And we also have a question from Ludmila Podobedova, representing RBC newspaper. Uh, she's asking about the role of Rosgaza de Bicha in the Tombe gas field development project. So what's the role of Rosgaza de Bicha in that project? Well, um, they're a partner of Gazprom to uh, develop the Tombe group of fields. Further questions from Interfax, maybe? Um, yeah, just a partner, and a partner is a broad concept. Okay, uh, if I may, I'd like to get back to my first question originally. What's the uh, overhaul and maintenance plan for uh, the trunk pipelines in the course of 2019 and the investment required? You mentioned 24 billion rubles. Investments uh, into maintenance capex, effectively, for trunk pipelines. And. Uh, any further investments, uh, not only for maintenance, but also overhaul. Um, well, we're talking about um, maintenance here. So what, what's, what's, what, what's the question again? Um, again, the question is the scope of works for overhaul of trunk pipelines and investment required for that. And so in the course of 2019, we're going to have uh, 840 kilometers of trunk pipelines overhauled. But then again, it depends on uh, the outcome of our uh, diagnostics exercise. Uh, it could be increased, the number of eight it could be increased. And uh, considering reconstruction of the pipelines, we do have a reconstruction program. Um, reconstruction of uh, what? Uh, the pipelines or compressed station? The pipelines themselves, okay? I think it's uh, not significant. Well, my colleagues are suggesting it's about 60 kilometers only. It's very insignificant. The, uh, that's for reconstruction. Uh, most of the uh, efforts um, dedicated here are related to compressor stations rather than the pipelines themselves. Okay, any further question? Yes, please go ahead. Olga Akimova from Gazprom Podziem Remont. Based on the 2018 results, um, some uh, employees of PGC Gazprom have got state award for uh, the design of um, Russian um, pipelines uh, for gas transmission. So I'm wondering what other uh, technologies um, are being developed by Russian enterprises for the purposes of gas production and transmission. What other equipment are um, you working on as part of um, the um, import substitution program for gas production, transmission, and uh, overhaul of wells? OK, I can tell you that uh, we have uh, every piece of equipment required from Russian manufacturers, so we don't have any need for import substitutions. Uh, and we don't have the need for imports. And considering new new technologies, okay, got your question. Well, obviously, uh, our Russian uh, local enterprises are working on that. You know that 100% of uh, pipelines that we procure come from Russian manufacturers. So that's 100% import substituted already. And on top of pipelines, uh, uh, any other technologies other than pipelines? Uh, OK, uh, we have Russian-made compressor stations. Uh, we have Russian-made uh, generator facilities, uh, so finishing equipment and completion equipment So, on, on the wells. 
I would like to add that on top of the pipelines uh, and um, compressor stations and uh, um, so for about 10 years or so, uh, we uh, have used our own dashboard for control of the hand and end equipment and uh, the valves as well, as well as metering equipment for multi-phase flows. Uh, so all the valves, for example, uh, Russian-made, the uh, fountain end equipment, uh, Russian-made, and uh, we have all sorts of valves and flow control equipment uh, for Arctic as well as uh, high um, acidity environment. Uh, um, so we have uh, been uh, running this press conference for nearly an hour. Two further questions and then we'll wrap up. Okay, a uh, qu couple of follow-up questions, if I may. Uh, one cruising Sternsky field that you have already mentioned. Any uh, potential guidance on the plate uh, volume? Well, actually, uh, I think uh, we have explained that uh, 32 billion per year, that's the plate, and the reserve base is rather significant. And then it comes um, to the question uh, within how many years that plate is going to be achieved, three years or five years. Okay, one uh, further question to Mr. Merkel. Are you considering Shell, other than Linde technology, as an option for the Baltic LNG project? And uh, Shell clearly explains they are not ready to share um, their dying air as a licensed technology unless they are involved as a shareholder. Does this mean you are still talking to Shell as a potential partner to the project as a shareholder? And so we're uh, to considering the, uh, the use of their technology at our slogan like a faction plant. And uh, that technology is available from both Shell and from Linda. Uh, we have considered both solutions and their feasibility, so they're pretty much on par uh, in terms of efficiency. So it comes to negotiations uh, for either technology to be used. Thank you. And uh, then comes my general question, the gas from Tambe field, uh, which uh, we're going to feed into the Bovenenko of Tatarzhok. Um, so basically, that is pretty much fully loaded with Bovenenko. We have uh, further lines in the plan from line three to line six. So when are you going to start construction of the third string? Do you have the preliminary budget for that? When are you going to complete it? Thank you. OK, I can tell you that um, on Harasavi field connection, well, the, uh, that is going to be the start of the third string to Bovenenkova to Ohta and the uh, connection to Bovenenkova. Um, well, we have the target of 2023. Uh, question. And uh, so that's Bovenenkova uh, further on, right? Trunk pipeline. Got you. And a quick follow up question uh, Portova compressor station, when is that going to be launched? Uh, okay. Uh, that is going to be aligned with the uh, liquefaction plant. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, with the gas processing plant. Sorry, that's uh, pretty much highly ready, and we're going to be launch that before to launch that before the end of this year. Um, so uh, we do see this facility launched before the year end. Okay, let me handle your question uh, on the third string of Bovenian That's 2023 to 2025 with several phases uh, across those years. That's when we are going to complete the third string. I'm not going to give you any particular date currently because uh, uh, a lot depends on the actual design solutions and technical solutions. Colleagues, I would like to thank you for your questions. This concludes our press conference with the next conference coming on the 20th of May to discuss um, power generation. Thank you so much. See you next time.